Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So new projections are in of how much the increase is going to be next year for the cost of living adjustment for all social security beneficiaries. So we're gonna be going over what you can expect to receive. Plus, could a new law be on the horizon that could potentially increase these amounts even more? We'll be covering that as well. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $200 in free stock or $200 in free cash, in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Robinhood. All you have to do is once you click on that link is just sign up for a free account and then simply link your bank account. You do not even have to make an opening deposit. At that point in time, Robinhood will be sending you one free stock worth all the way up to $200. And if you'd rather just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stock, is just sell for what it's worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into it today. We have a new projection of what the next increase is going to be looking like for all beneficiaries of Social Security, whether you receive retirement benefits, whether you receive SSI, or whether you receive SSDI. We're gonna be going over all these amounts. So we're coming up right here from the Senior Citizens League. So they say that the new COLA projection is going to be 2.63%. So they say that our model points to a substantially lower COLA for next year after the 3.2% COLA in 2023. They say that the 2025 COLA prediction is about 2.63% up from 2.57% last month. And the rate of inflation as measured by the consumer price index used to calculate the social security cost of living adjustment fell to 3% for June. Although easing inflation should relieve older consumers, the rapidly increasing price of groceries in the 2020s have seen thus far mean financial relief is still far away. From 2020 to 2023, the cost of the average grocery item with direct prices tracked by the CPI has risen by 24%, while eggs capture many headlines with a rise of 86%. Many other key items such as coffee, sugar, bread, and ham saw their cost increase by more than a third. So we can see a list of a number of items here up on the screen tracked by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is uh, the, the foods that have have risen the most uh, since 2020. So of course the most up there, grade A eggs, one dozen up 86% since 2020. Iceberg lettuce follows that up 72%. White sugar up 45%, canned soft drinks up 44%. So across the board, groceries have gotten pricier and pricier along with gas. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, inflation has been bad in general, but especially at the grocery store. Um, so yeah, I mean, I it's hard to see prices going back down to where they were in 2019, 2020. All we can really hope for at this point in time, I think, is that you know prices don't continue to go up at the same price, uh, same pace. Inflation has been easing a little bit. Prices are still rising. They're just not rising at the same seven, eight, nine, ten, or in the case of eggs, eighty-six percent as they were before. Uh, now the article goes on to say that rising grocery prices is creating food insecurity for many retirees. Feeding America estimates that 5.5 million Americans aged 60 and above suffer from food insecurity in 2021 in the most recent study available on the subject, and that number is likely higher today. In TSCL's 2024 senior survey, which had more than 1,550 respondents from across the United States, 34% of retirees said they had visited a food pantry or applied for food stamps over the last 12 months. What's more, 60% of respondents said food was the fastest growing expense in their monthly budgets, which was more than double the next hardest hitting expense category, which of course was housing. So I think for a lot of people, you know, the, the cost of food has been rising over the past few years and has definitely uh, been one of the higher priced things in their budgets. And there's really no way around it. I mean, we got to eat. I mean, a lot of people are faced with the dilemma, like, do I skip a meal? Do I skip eating altogether today or getting my prescription medication instead? It's, it's a sad situation. And again, it's hard seeing things get a whole lot better. Maybe the prices won't rise at the same pace, but 
I, it's very hard to see uh, prices going down to where they were uh, you know, pre-2020. Uh, now we can also look at the annual Social Security cost of living adjustments over the past few decades. And we can see, of course, that huge rise that we saw back in 2021, 2022, 2023. And it appears to be going you know, a little bit back down closer to where it was. But again, we have to get inflation back down to 2% or even further below that. So what exactly would a 2.7% increase look like across the board? How much uh, of an increase, monetarily speaking, could you expect to receive? Well, for retirees this year, retirees, the average retiree check this year in 2024 is right around $1,907. So for them, what that would mean is basically like a $51 per month increase or an increase of right around $612 over the course of a year. As far as SSI beneficiaries go this year in 2024, the very maximum benefit you can receive if you are receiving SSI benefits, although most people are receiving much less than this amount, is $943. Now again, most people receiving SSI benefits are not receiving anywhere near this amount, but if you are receiving the max payment of $943, that would work out to an increase for you of right around $25 on a monthly basis. And then as far as all disabled workers, disabled workers on average would receive an increase of right around $41 per month. So over the course of a year, that's going to be a little bit below $500 over the course of a year as far as your increase goes. Now, a lot of people aren't too happy with these increases and rightfully so because over the past couple of decades, even though there have been cost of living adjustment increases, in almost all the years, there have been some years where there was no increase at all. There have been some years where the increase was less than 1%, so not really anything substantial whatsoever. However, even though there have been increases over these years, they've seen what the, what the difference of what they've been getting as far as their increase goes versus the difference of what they're actually having to pay more for for the goods and services. Well, the cost of adjustments aren't exactly keeping up, and there have been uh, numerous organizations that have actually been tracking this data, like this look at what the cost of living adjustments are, and let's also look at what seniors are paying for for the goods and services. And there's this gap here, and the gap seems to be growing each and every year. However, there is one law that is being considered right now that would increase these cost of living adjustments, which hopefully, hopefully would help seniors and other people receiving Social Security benefits keep up with the rapid rise in inflation. So according to The Motley Fool, this change could boost your Social Security COLAs in the future if lawmakers go for it. So they start out by saying that a big change is needed. Currently, Social Security COLAs are calculated based on third quarter data from the Consumer Price Index for urban wage earners and clerical workers. And you might recognize the flaw in the system just by reading that. As you might imagine, the cost incurred by clerical and urban workers differ substantially from those incurred by retirees, who often spend far more money each year on health care than their younger counterparts. But the CPIW doesn't account for that, and understandably so. A 2023 report from the nonpartisan Senior Citizens League found that Social Security beneficiaries had lost 36% of their buying power since the year of 2000. It also found that seniors aged 85 and over as of 2023 would need an extra $516.70 per month to maintain the same level of buying power as in the year of 2000. And they also go on to say that since the CPIW is not the most accurate measure of the cost uh, that Social Security recipients face, a far better solution could be to switch over to the CPIE or the Consumer Price Index for the elderly for the purpose of calculating COLAs. Doing so could result not only in higher COLAs, but ones that actually allow seniors to maintain their buying power based on the things they spend most of their money on. So really, this seems like a no-brainer to me. I think instead of having these huge pieces of legislation for Social Security reform, where we increase benefits by, let's say, like $200 per month, increase the full retirement age, increase taxes and things like that. I think we should just have a standalone bill where we change the cost of living adjustment from the CPIW over to the CPIE, put it on the floor and let lawmakers decide. And we can see where lawmakers stand. Like, do Republicans believe that Social Security beneficiaries should be getting a fair cost of living adjustment? 
Do Democrats believe that Social Security beneficiaries should be getting a, co a fair cost of living adjustment? This is a very easy bill. They could easily just put on the floor. It does one thing and one thing only. I know it's hard for them to wrap their minds around that they don't need to pack in like 100 different things into one bill and then argue over it for you know multiple years and nothing ever happens. I think they should just have a standalone bill, change the cost of living adjustment from the CPIW over to the CPIE, put it on the, uh, on the floor for a vote, and I think they can get it done. At least you would hope anyways. But leave your thoughts and comments below. Would you be on board with a change in the cost of living adjustment over to the CPIE? Leave your thoughts and comments below. But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it. if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.